Business books are kind of stupid. Like they kind of make no sense. Knowledge. But as an entrepreneur and CEO, I constantly want to better myself and my businesses. So I'm seeking knowledge to do that. But when I read those books, it kind of makes me feel almost dumber. Therefore, as a business owner and as a CEO, I seek inspiration and knowledge from other fields. And I often find that be much more helpful. One of the ways I've used over time is sports. Sport anecdotes actually translate, I think, quite well to business world as well. And NBA is one of the best examples, in my opinion, to translate into how also real life business works. Anything's possible! Just like the NBA, the business world is an oligopoly. And what I mean with that is that it's an industry that's basically a monopoly with few different players. Now, usually in business, that means two to three players, maybe four. In the case of NBA, it's currently 30, maybe soon 32, depending on the, what the future brings. But what I mean with that is that it's a controlled environment. And by controlling that market, everybody kind of wins. And therefore it's not free competition. And I actually don't think most industries or businesses are free competition. Like in theory they are, but not in reality. And some of the best businesses are really monopolies. Think of like Facebook and Google and whatnot. But they, how these industries get built is that they, they know they have a couple competitors and that's actually helping everyone, but then they block other competitors from entering the market. And that's kind of tough to know as a startup owner. And then you often go, directly against those. So you're like the G League Ignite trying to challenge those big powers. Um, but that is kind of the startup world. But once you know that that's how the market operates, it's easier to kind of find your way up from a lottery team to a playing team to a playoff team to NBA contender. Another lesson that NBA has taught me or reminded me is that a rising tide lifts all boats. There's a lot of teams that suck in the NBA, like lately like Charlotte Hornets or let's say Detroit Pistons and Washington, that always seems to suck. And those teams still do really well. So some of these teams have been sold as of recently for billions of dollars, which is crazy. It used to be that only like the Knicks and the Lakers were worth a billion dollars. Now every, even the worst team is worth a billion dollars. And that's because like the league has evolved and when everybody's grown, everybody's doing better. And that's kind of true as well for business. So ideally, uh, you want to align yourself with companies that are growing. It's easier to excel as an employee in a company that's doing well. Or if you're a business owner, you want to be in an industry or category that's growing really well, and then maybe even have slightly smaller market share. But as it's evolving and growing, there's more for you as well. Warren Buffett actually has a quote on this too. It, it's about like, it doesn't matter how fast you row, it matters in what boat you're in. So the same for business, you got to choose your category and your industry really carefully, or if your employee choose your company really carefully. And that might matter more than what your individual contribution actually are. The other thing I've spent a lot about thinking as an NBA fan is that there's a salary cap and there's a salary cap in business too. Now there's not a four salary cap with like the collective bargaining agreement, but in a way, every company has a pain point. Now, similar to the NBA, there's like, um, there's the floor and that's like the minimum salary. Then there's like the, the salary cap, but then there's like a hard cap. There's a first apron, second apron, and there's a cost to pay. If you're in the second apron, then like you can't do these things. The same with business. Now, depending on the industry and the size of the business, those might be different. But for example, with salaries, there is a pain point. There was a area during COVID when everybody's salaries blew up because it was the great resignation. And then the companies to retain talent, sometimes like people ask for like a hundred percent salary raise and like and companies did it because they were desperate and they needed it. But there's a pain point where if the company is not profitable or, or there's much better talent for less money it, that it backfires. When I was a teenager, I worked in the paper factory. Why in a paper factory? A, I wanted money. So once I turned 18, I could buy my own house and move away. But the other reason was that the paper union in Finland and Sweden is very strong. 
because they had this dominance and they could control the market. And therefore, the employees kept asking for higher salary, higher salary, higher salary, higher salary. And at some point, these paper companies started A, outsourcing factories to overseas, even though Finland and Sweden had the good trees. It was cheaper to ship the trees to Brazil than to like freaking do it in Finland or Sweden. Or even more radical, just completely closing those factories out. So with business, there is a pain point with salaries too, even though it might not be as obvious and you can kind of bend it to your favor for a while. But if you abuse as an employer, if you abuse that for a while, it will, might backfire. Like after the great designation, a lot of companies started firing people that were overpriced because they had asked for too big of a raise. And same as a business owner, you need to know this. You need to have like cap flexibility and you have got to manage your payroll. Now you could overpay one or two employees consciously, but you got to manage the collective salaries. And um, it's not as fixed as an MBA, but the same way as MBA GMs manage the cap as a business owner, uh, you got to manage the cap. And as an employee, you got to know that this cap exists, even though it's not as clear as in the MBA. A big trend in the NBA is for the last few years have been positionless basketball, where basically means that the center can pull up and create off the dribble and bring up the ball up the court. And then at the same time, it means that like the point guard can be like seven footer or six, eight and can play and defend multiple positions. And I think this is the same in business. Now it used to be this hierarchy where you would come in as a marketing coordinator and then become a marketing specialist. And then you were the junior brand manager, associate brand manager, brand manager, senior brand manager, junior brand director, brand director. Yeah, yeah, you get the point VP at C level. Now there's a lot more of different kinds of like flexibility. So these roles, especially these like expert roles or knowledge worker roles have made these layers and hierarchies and companies really unique. Like there could be like an individual contributor who reports directly to the CEO just because he has this weird, unique talent. And at the same time, it forces that even VP and C-level people have to be salespeople. They have to go on the road. And I think the online internet and the increasingly AI and outsourcing certain tasks overseas has made companies be a lot more flexible and look very different. Most cases, it means that the companies are very small and they have a lot of high-end talent and the rest of the work is outsourced overseas or to other companies. And you just have a group of specialists. But when that happens, like the traditional hierarchies don't exist anymore. And I think the positionless basketball is a good reminder of the flexibility in the workplace too. And you shouldn't be bound by these layers and hierarchies in your head. Can you just play good basketball is all that should matter. And if you can, and you can produce, then that's great. And by the way, as a business owner, you want to have great talent, people who can be flexible up and down the organization. You want to have senior people who can roll up their sleeves and get dirty. And you want to have junior people who have the confidence to do higher level stuff really early on. I think that's beautiful. Another thing that all sports, including the NBA, remind me of a building a company is that the importance of role players and glue guys, like not everybody can be a star player. In the case of soccer or NBA, there's just one ball and like only one person can touch it. But if you're the whole team is made out of players who need the ball in their hands, and then it's hard to kind of corroborate. You need people who are off ball screeners and cutters. And you need people who have different kinds of complementary skills and who are also like to be in those roles. So they're not unhappy if they don't get enough touches and shots in a game. Same way as in a company, like if you have a fancy customer meeting or a fun PR event and you get to eat in a nice restaurant, not everybody gets to go. Some people are working in ops or accounting and those roles are critical, absolutely critical for the success. And you need different kinds of personalities. In my company, we use this disc analysis where it kind of divides people into four categories. And it's good to look at it and to see if you have too many dominant people um, or extroverted versus introverted people or who are detail oriented or social oriented and have a balance of those people. Now, if everybody's social oriented and doesn't care about the details, that might leave the company in kind of a, a struggle. So. Having a different types of people in the organization is actually a blessing. And then at the same time, you got to appreciate those people that are doing the quote unquote dirty work.
because the company probably wouldn't exist without those people. Now, while you need glue guys and role players and people in the ops and finance and doing the unsung heroes of any company in any industry, usually companies just like in the NBA teams live or die by the top end talent. And this is kind of brutal, um, but like not everybody is a star player. Right now in the NBA, as we're filming it, there's six players who have taken the team to a championship and won the MVP. So basically been the star main guy for a winning team. And same way in businesses, if there's someone who's like a star salesperson or a marketer, they tend to get a lot more salary than anyone else. And also there's only few of them in the industry, same with like coders and developers as well. And those are worth their money in gold because there's a limited amount. And in order to build a winning team, you need few of this high-end talent. So while role players and glue guys are important, at the end of the day, the team will only go as far as their star player and ideally superstar player. And if you're a business owner, you got to search for your own industry and category. Who are those superstars and try to recruit those into your team. And that might mean you're overpaying them based on an average. But at the end of the day, for you to succeed, you probably need that. Time is money. There's an opportunity cost. And if you snooze, you lose. And often companies don't have the luxury to hire, you know, B and B plus players for those roles. From a cultural point of view, a thing that NBA can teach us in business is you gotta care, you gotta care for everyone, but don't be too woke. I think NBA has done a fantastic job, particularly with racism in America, and they have showed a lot of diversity and a lot of different cultures. And now there's an emergence of European players and it's actually quite international. I'd say it's one of the more international games. Hockey for sure is not that international. And soccer is international, but not involving the largest market, the US market. And then don't even get me started about American football and baseball. So in a way, like, I guess soccer and NBA are the most international games. And NBA has done a really good job at promoting those. That being said, in the last few years, it's gone more woke and TV ratings are down. And I think everything you can go too far. So the good golden lesson in life in the middle road is not too high, not too low, not too left, not too right. Easier said than done. But I think what NBA teaches us is you got to care and have diversity inclusion. But if the diversity and inclusion becomes bigger thing than the product on the floor, then people who love the product on the floor are no longer interested in being your customers. So um, don't make DEI or whatever corporate social responsibility the main thing is just the thing that supports the main thing. And in that case, it's great. But if you take it too far, you usually pay for the cost of that too. My final learning from the NBA to the business world is like building a winning culture and a winning team takes time. It rarely happens overnight. Yeah, sometimes luck is in your favor, injuries happen, you happen to pan out. But in many cases, there's a team dynamic that takes time and you have to evolve it. Like team needs to form, storm, norm, and then they perform. Case examples of like Milwaukee Bucks before they won their championship, that team was together for a long time and they just kind of improved on the margins and the edges, but the core of it was together. The current NBA champion, Denver Nuggets, the same thing. The core of that team was together for a long time, and then they added a few small pieces on the margins later. Yes, sometimes super teams come together, but more often than not, they fail unless the ownership and the management has time to let it kind of sink in and find their rhythm. So if you're a business owner, you need to know that winning takes time and there will be adversity and you take lessons from those and you build kind of storming of the team is important, mandatory and valuable. And then if that leads to lessons and norming, and then it will lead to performing. But if you panic over every obstacle, you never let the team reach its kind of final form. And if you're an employee, you should know that like every company has its own problems. It's just like you choose when you join a company which company or what team with you're gonna be facing those adversities. And those adversities make you a better team and it will make the end outcome, if you end up winning or doing well, even sweeter. You'll remember those difficult moments. Uh, but too many times, both companies and NBA teams panic and the first sign of trouble, they fire the coach or trade away their players, where, where you need to kind of 
let players develop, team develop, and then find those weaknesses and then improve upon those weaknesses. What's your favorite sports anecdote? Is there a, a specific sport or a thing you've learned from sports into business? I'm curious to know, leave a comment below. And if you enjoy the content, subscribe to The Spore and I'll see you in the next video.